Yo, what up YouTube? My name is Jeremy Biggers. I'm an artist based out of Dallas, Texas. And today I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do the doodle grid. A doodle grid is similar to a square grid. Uh, it's just a little bit different in that you don't have to hassle with straight edges and making sure that all your corners are exactly 90 degrees. So what you wanna do is you wanna put down as many differing shapes as you can. You don't wanna do too many of the exact same shape because then your eyes will get lost when you're doing the overlay. So you just wanna make up as much stuff as possible. Here, you don't wanna to think too much. You just wanna let your hands be free and just put down anything. So then you wanna take out your iPad or your phone and you wanna to try to be as parallel to the wall as possible so that there's no distortion. Uh, if, you, if you're leaning too far forward or leaning too far back, uh, your proportions will be completely off. So you wanna make sure the camera that you're shooting with is as parallel to the wall that you're shooting as possible. So then you open up that photo in Procreate or any other similar program, and you're gonna pull in your reference image. Scale it to the size you want it to be. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the opacity so that you can see the squiggles through your reference image. So now you can see, okay, this squiggle lines up with this tooth, the edge of this lip lines up here. Um, you can just see all these points of reference. And so now when you're putting it on the wall, you know exactly where that thing should be. You know exactly where that tongue should line up. You know exactly where those teeth should be. So now it's just a matter of measuring it and putting it on the wall. What this does is it helps with your proportions so that you don't have to carry a straight edge with you and hope that you got the measurements exactly right. This is a little bit more precise with a little bit less effort. Uh, a little, it's a little bit quicker as well. So uh, it's, there's no right or wrong way to do it. This is just the way I prefer doing it. So as you notice here, what I'm doing is I'm looking back and forth, making sure I'm paying really close attention to my reference. You don't wanna go too long without looking over at your reference. I started painting lips because I wanted something that would combine my love of painting realism with something that could be considered pop art. And lips are a subject matter that's been used in pop art forever. ask me all the time, how do you paint gold or realistic gold? And gold is one of those tricky colors that it just reflects a lot more colors than we realize. Green is one of the colors that it reflects. I don't know why, but every time you paint realistic gold, you have to add in a little bit of green. Having a really good time learning to use spray paint. I've painted with acrylic and oil for years and one of the biggest challenges of spray paint as compared to oil and acrylic is arriving to the color you need. And what I mean by that is with oil or acrylic, I can mix the exact color I need on a palette before taking it to the canvas. With spray paint, I don't have the luxury of mixing the colors before I go onto the piece. You have to actually nail the color on the piece itself. So you need to do a little bit more advanced techniques in order to arrive to the color that you're striving for.
Tongues are one of those things that out of context or at a scale that you're not used to look ridiculous. They don't look like anything. They just look like a wad of flesh. And saying the word wad of flesh just sounds gross, but yeah, that there's no real way to describe how to paint a tongue. It's, tongues are just gross, man. They're just, they're gross. you guys are excited to see the final product and I'm excited to show it to you but before we do that make sure you guys like subscribe and comment here on YouTube hit that bell in the corner so that you're notified every time I post and also make sure you guys are following me on Instagram my name is stem and thorn s-t-e-m-a-n-d-t-h-o-r-n on Instagram I post a lot of the artwork that I'm working on it's pretty real time uh, and it'd be great if you guys follow me over there so let's check out the finished piece right now All right, so that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you on the next one.